three friends, thousands of movies, a million TV shows, and an infinite number of opinions. This is Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between. It rhymes. Every week, we review new releases and spotlight an older film that you just might want to add to your watch list. So hold on to your butts, because here are your hosts, Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. Welcome back to Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between. We are here with another show for you tonight. We're talking not as much content this week because we've been really busy. We haven't been able to watch very much, so we don't have quite as much uh, new stuff. I know I promised Stranger Things, but that didn't happen, so... You are the worst fan ever. I know. I'm letting everyone down. I'm so sorry. I'm letting myself down, really. We might be the only Netflix people like that have subscriptions that haven't watched it yet based on their like. Oh my god, numbers. the internet's like blowing up about how incredible this new season is. I haven't even finished season two yet. Oh my god. I think I saw 287 million hours viewed for like wow. the opening weekend. It was insane. It is. That's crazy. Shattered the Bridgerton record. Wow. I mean, it just goes to show, even with a few years in between seasons, people are still clamoring for, for And this ironically, world. nobody in this room has seen it. I know. It's one of those we, things... And Frank and I have at least watched season three, though. Like, at, at least. Yeah. It's one of those things for Netflix where the success of something like Stranger Things is why they keep throwing a million things at the wall. I know. But now, supposedly, we're done with, quote-unquote, vanity projects, like The Irishman. Which is, yet, like... Is that not was a, not good. But but that's it not the debate. Like, to give Martin Scorsese, of all people, money to make his movie, I get that. But they've just been, like, throwing spaghetti at a wall for years. And what happened to the whole Adam Sandler thing? Was it like a huge contract? Um, he made a few things, and then nothing. No, he he's, just. He's got something new coming out. They just soon. filmed Murder Mystery 2, yeah. and okay. it's coming out. Okay. Yeah. But and Hubie it's been, Halloween. It's been that, a while. Oh, that was bad. Yeah. No, well, there, there's more than you realize. He's got that new realize. basketball movie that's dropping. Um, yeah, the World Wide West style movie with him and AAU and sneakers and stuff like that. He's involved in that. Yeah. So there's there's more coming from Adam Sandler, but I I think the the debate around Netflix is just kind of silly for them to talk about these vanity projects being the problem, as if it's not the fact that they've just been hemorrhaging cash for so many years. I mean, they they were giving a budget of I read something like. 10 to like uh, possibly up to 30 million per episode on stranger things which just seems excessive really poor business <laughs> so but i mean think about it if there's if there's six episodes this season all of them I think are, so. are at least an hour or mm -hmm. more long there were so, all many movies yeah yeah so I mean, to film a movie for thirty million dollars for seventy-five minutes, you'd be like, "That's an acceptable budget." This is thirty per at six or one hundred eighty million. Yeah, yeah, but the whole model around Netflix. I mean, this was kind of inevitable given the fact that the, the because they don't have ads and there's no like they their only revenue is the subscriptions and I guess merchandise to some extent. Yeah, and how much money do they do they distribute? Like when the films go into theaters, do you know how much of those, how much of that money they get it's on those deals? I have and no rights? idea, but it's not a lot. Not a lot. Okay. So, I don't know, but Netflix is beside the point. Uh, I actually want to talk about HBO because, as our opening question, uh, we had a couple of big HBO anniversaries this week. Uh, the Wire had its twenty fifth anniversary 20, of its twenty twenty. Sorry. 20. 20. 20th anniversary of its premiere date and then today uh we're recording this on friday is actually the fourth anniversary of the premiere of succession so i thought with all of that uh, that we would talk about our favorite hbo series of all time and i want this to be like a multi-season show not limited caesars <laughs> limited little se caesars little caesar limited series pizza, jeremy's pizza. distracting me <laughs> with making fun of me okay Pizza, pizza. Frank, I'm going to go to you first. I can't say a limited series. You can't say a limited oh, series. This would be so easy if I could say a limited series. I know. What would you pick? I would pick Chernobyl. I thought Chernobyl was, that was good. groundbreaking and incredible television. It was as good. It was. I, I loved everything about that story and how they 
how they framed it. It's brilliant. But that does not matter, according to <laughs> the lord it's of my... our television <laughs> it's empire here. It's her rules. Yeah, I've I've watched quite a few HBO shows in my life. I've watched Sex and the City. I've watched Entourage. I've watched The Wire. I've, I've watched, watched none Sopranos. of those. <laughs> Literally none of those. Uh, I've watched our list. I have a guess of what Jeremy's going to pick. but I don't think you do. Okay. I think you think you think what it is. I think no. I th- I I feel and, and what you're thinking is not wrong, but it's not what I'm picking. Okay. Game of Thrones, uh, uh, True Blood, I, and on and off. I wasn't as religious with you guys uh, where uh, regarding True Blood. Yeah. Uh, but I'm 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 gonna go with maybe it's recent. Barry's fantastic. I'm I'm gonna go with Succession though. Like, really. I just, I can't get over how much I love that family. It's I love phenom- the Roy's. It's a phenomenal show. Every person in that show is excellent in their role. Yeah. The show was well written. I I can't get enough of it. I'll I'll rewatch it going into the next season coming up. I just it's probably my favorite show on television right now and one of the best shows they've ever done in my opinion. I can't really disagree with any of your points there. It's a it's hard not to pick the wire, but I'm hoping you will. I'm not picking the wire. You're not picking. Oh, I, I, oh, oh, I don't know. I keep going back and forth. <laughs> so not to play my hand, but I could pick apart your picks, but I'd be lying. I, <laughs> <laughs> I th- like it's it's hard because I I do think I worry about recency bias for right. sure. For, yeah. And the show's not over. We don't know where you know right, where this is all going to go. Because before the final season of Game of Thrones, well, I might have said Game of that's Thrones. That's the thing. And I was thinking about this earlier. Like, had it not been for that final season, it would my answer would be Game of Thrones. No ifs, ands, or buts. And not really even the final season. Just the last two episodes. Yeah. Because eight one was eight one was great Fantas- and even the the one yeah. where they're just sitting around talking before the fight mm-hmm. is great the one with the fight like it's the big, really it's just the last two episodes the yeah. last episode and uh and yeah yeah you're you're absolutely right and it and it's hard because i don't i hate to judge the whole series which was so excellent right you have on- eight seasons yeah. no you can't boil it down to two episodes. Exactly. And I can see myself revisiting the series in at, the future. At that point, you can figure it has a 98% success rate. Yeah. Right? Like, George R. R. Martin said something recently where he was like, I can't understand how people can hate something so much that they used to love. And it's like, I, I get it. It's disappointment more than hate. It's it the is. ones that you love the most that let you down they the most. They hurt you the most. How I Met you Your Mother, most. man. Like, that. I can't ever. I can't. But I can see myself revisiting Game of Thrones. I I had already watched the series through like four or five times, but I can't give it my all time favorite because it just has that dark cloud. So if that shitty episode existed in season four, and then they finished with something phenomenal instead, how does it change? Things? I don't think like, it's close at that how, point. How does yeah. the end like if they stick modify, the landing? I don't yeah. think it's close. Right. If they stick the landing, then that it's game over. Sure. Like, I I don't disagree with you, but it's just crazy to think about how that they're one this, yeah this close yeah this close and to I'm having. Very hopeful for House of the Dragon. That does look good. Yeah. So I don't know, Jeremy. What are you gonna? Okay. Do you want me to say what I think I you're gonna do? Go want, with? I want to hear what you think. I think you're gonna say Oz. And I knew you were gonna say Oz. Okay. And I was gonna make a reference about. No, no. In my pick, I have there's definitely no reason to see bias. Okay. But my shoulders are old. Are you going with <laughs> Dream On? <laughs> Frank nails it. Dream On. What is this? It is one of the greatest shows of all time. Okay. Tell me about it. I've I don't know if I've ever I, heard. I've of only it. because of Jeremy. It's not on back. HBO. That's the kicker. Now they don't have it on it, HBO it's, Max. It's not streaming on HBO Max. Oh. And it's probably late or eighties, early nineties. Okay. Um. Basically, so, you know that little static thing in the beginning of HBO yeah. shows? That's yeah. from Dream On. Oh. That's what started that whole yeah. logo. Um, so, basically, the whole, like, opening sequence, mm-hmm. uh, the main character's name is Martin. So, basically, it shows him as a kid, like, his parents, like, didn't pay attention to him. Right. They just sent him in front of a TV. So, his whole life, he just watched TV, watched TV, watched TV. So, throughout this sitcom, if you will... Mm-hmm. Through all of his life's problems and divorce and kids and stuff, 
whenever he has like a random thought, it's like a TV clip. Yeah. Random thought. And it's really funny. Oh. And it's it's got some nudity, some adult themes. And yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's HBO. But... It's, and it's fun. It's just <laughs> so funny. I'll have to find some clips for you. Yeah. Like I said, every time he has like a weird thought, or it's, a, it's an old TV clip. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he kind of thinks all in TV. Yeah. it's That sounds like an interesting concept. Which, it's a better version of Cable Guy. Okay. Well, I've never seen Cable Guy. It's n- n- not even, but yeah, it's... I We'll find some clips. I'll, okay. I'll find it for you. All right. But You've never you, seen Cable Guy? No, I haven't. That's your wife. <laughs> That's just mind-boggling to me because... And you're right. I'm not right in that description other than the fact that like his whole life is centered around television and jokes and things related to tv because he grew i can up that see very that yes same way right? this character's not psychotic no he's not like <laughs> it's it, it's not the psychotic nature it's more about the uh the way his brain operates the way his brain Just, operates and like that same sort yeah. of nothing but tv quotes and nostalgia and, and i kind of like. sounds like me i kind of relate yeah as well. yeah i remember watching this again i was i had to have been 14 15 16 watching this was some fun scenes yeah. All right. Um, but no, to your point, Oz. Oz is a great show. Yeah. And it was definitely be on my list. True Blood could be on there. There's a lot of great shows on HBO. There's Succession, 100. Yeah. percent I mean, I was looking through the Game list today, and I was like, my God, the just the slam dunks that they've hit as far as a network is. They have more hits than misses. Oh yeah. For sure. I think Cinemax has even got a higher percentage of win rate. Yeah. They do less shows, but. I like most of their shows, too. It's true. Yeah. I'm not willing to count Warrior because it didn't start on HBO. Yeah. But it is a show that I just find. Right. You know, well, it's a Cinemax show. It, yeah. it was a Cinemax show, yeah. yeah. And uh, can't wait for the next season of that to come out. So. so, for me, we talked a little about kind of Game of Thrones. I thought about Sex and the City mainly because... I, do, I think it's an incredible... Mainly because you like awful things. We've like determined that. this. Don't even. Frank will agree with me. Sex and the City is fantastic. It really is. It's... Yes, looking back on it, there's a lot of problematic elements, and we're not even going to discuss the new <laughs> um, iteration. But it's funny because, you know, you mentioned, Jeremy, the HBO logo, like that static thing that we associate with HBO. Every single time I hear it, I expect the Sex and the City theme to follow it it's just what my brain goes to every time however i think for me personally there are two other shows that hit me a little deeper one is the wire and the feels or in the (laughs) just in on every level i mean i we've talked to i tend to gravitate more towards drama than towards comedy and sex and the city is very much comedy is it though? Yes. <laughs> so one is definitely the wire, which I'm really strongly considering naming my favorite. I think it's a phenomenal series. I don't know that there is another show that is as culturally relevant and important. Um, maybe from even the you know the whole HBO catalog, it was. It's such a, a it, I came to it very late in life. I only watched it a couple of years ago for the first time, but it's every single story element still resonates today. And I think that's a really powerful piece. However, there is one other show that I could not get enough of. The True Blood? No. Vice no. Principles? No. Euphoria? Deadwood. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great choice. Completely forgot about that one. Yeah. But 100% great show. I I gobbled that show up. It was like I could not sleep. I couldn't do it. Like when I sat down to finally watch it. And then it, what, like five to six uh, fucks per minute. Like Exactly. Words. Like yeah. word. <laughs> I think that's all Ian McShane's script was. Right. Fucking cocksucker. Every, every, every other word. Just literally in, everything in... else he says. It's. I mean, there. I think there was three seasons, and then the movie. The movie. Um, and the movie's great. Like a lot of other shows that have tried to come back with. I movie. didn't watch the show until the movie was announced. Yeah. So I watched you no know, three seasons relatively yeah. quickly, and I really liked it. Yeah, I think I think I was the same way. It, it prompted me like the movie was coming, and it prompted me, and I was already such a huge fan of Timothy Oliphant, so I was like, no, I got to go back and watch this, and I I absolutely fucking love it. And I I just 
think it's it's a really special show with some phenomenal See, performances. That I can, you know, shake your hand and agree and say, yep, good choice. <laughs> Sex and City, I cannot do that. <laughs> Sometimes you and I agree on things, Jeremy. Sometimes. <laughs> and there's two shows I didn't even think about, but again, many moons ago, Frank mentioned one, Arliss. That show was so ahead of its time. It really and was. And the cameos they had every week, mm-hmm. it was phenomenal. Just a fun show. It was. Yeah. And then way before that, sports-wise, first and ten. I don't know first and ten. Like, it's I know a, of it, but I don't know. It's a football. It. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, uh, what was that movie with Gene, Gene Hackman? Um, uh, the Replacements? Well, not like that, but it was, uh, I don't think, I, I, I remember down the road, but just a really funny football. Yeah. Necessary Roughness? Sort of. It's more, I guess, more like Major League, but football. Got it. Um, just the shenanigans the players got into. Yeah. yeah. That kind I, of thing. I mean, the things that we didn't mention. We didn't say Eastbound and Down. We didn't say the Righteous Gemstones. Oh, we didn't say the Leftovers. Like, there's so many things. Yeah. Leftovers lost me. It had me, it lost me. It, I, you should go back. I, I, okay. Yeah, I need to go back. Two and, and three, I can under, like, two, I can understand getting lost. Go back, you won't be disappointed. Cause, but no, Righteous Gemstones, phenomenal show. Yeah. I know we mentioned kind of True Blood in and out, and I considered that, but True Blood is so uneven for me. Some seasons are great, and some seasons are trash. Yeah, I get that. So the highs are very high, though. Yes. Yeah. The lows are less. Eh. And can we just give a honorable mention to the one and only John Oliver? Because I mean, yeah, it, it's. See, I don't consider that a. Se- I mean, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, I just don't consider that like a show. Correct. Yeah, it's like a, I watch it religiously every weekend. So should yes. be mentioned yeah. in the HBO, you know, pantheon, but doesn't technically qualify for what we're talking about. Yeah, we, I mean, we watch the clips and then we watch the whole show. Like, it's yeah, both. Like, I, we're, I, yeah, watch. we're sick of fans. Like for that guy, I, no, I've never missed an episode. The, the so. production of the show, even through the pandemic, was incredible. I, and I, I firmly believe that he care. I don't know how he handles it, right? Yeah. Because I just there's so much care in his voice and what he wants. I don't know how he goes home and lives like a not a life as a normal human and not like want to blow his brains out from the <laughs> things that he discusses. It's incredible. And he yeah. and he does a good job of framing things. Like, hey, here's the problem. Here's what caused it. Here's how we can fix it. So he he doesn't yeah. just say yeah. Um, most of your like news, you know, quote unquote news yeah. shows. You no, know, I won't mention names. Obviously, we know we're talking about. All they do is just you know fear monger and just say all these different problems yeah. without offering kind of solutions. Yeah. He at least tries to see every time he says, "So what can we do about it?" And then yeah. he offers solutions. Yeah, and, at, at oh. least at least a starting point to think about it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the actual solutions. Right. Some problems don't have immediate solutions, but he's at least offering suggestions. Yeah, and not just throwing out fear mongering. He does a great job of educating his audience and really filling in some of the gaps on things, and, and in doing, a fun way. Yeah. It, it makes you want to learn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's very engaging and. You're right. I don't always agree with his suggestions, but they all. Oh, are there's been times. That, there's been times like yeah, that's yeah. I, it's like that's 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 wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But at least uh, uh, the question I always ask people is like, when you point out a problem, what's your solution? Right. What? How do you plan to fix it? And he at least always has an answer for that question. Right. Yeah. All right. So. Moving into some of the new stuff, uh, Frank and I watched episode three of Obi Wan. Jeremy has watched episode one and two now. Correct, but not three. Jeremy, what did you think of episodes one and two? Um, so so. Okay, so so. So so. I'll take it. I guess it didn't grab me immediately. Mm-hmm. I'm out anxious to see where it goes. Yeah. Some of the acting was a little meh. Yeah. So, and that, so I would think that Star Wars money could do better. So here's the thing, and I think that it's an important discussion, and I I want to kind of approach this delicately. There has been a lot of online hate towards Moses Ingram, who plays Reva, the third sister. It's been really uh, horrific, racist. Right. Hate. My dislike is not. It's just her acting and the scenes that I've seen are just bad. In this. it takes me out of the movie. Or the show. And she's very it's good. Nothing in, to do. She's from. Um, she was very good in Queen's Gambit. Right. In, yeah. In her scenes there, how they wrote this character, how she's portraying her, I agree with you one hundred percent. The and, acting takes me out of the episode. And I, I want to. St- that's just honest. Yeah. You know, there's nothing to do with who she. Plus, I've seen other stuff that she's perfectly fine. Right. I mean, so, and it's hard to know if it's just the writing or you know the 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 way that they're 
drafting this character, you know, if she really was just entirely the wrong person to cast, I don't know. But I think, you know, Frank and I were talking about this, you know, do we feel like we can even criticize her now, given how much of the the story has turned towards the racist hate being thrown at her? Well, just just because there's a racist asshole out there doesn't mean I can't not like her acting. So I will criticize to answer your question. Yeah. Because mine is just, I don't like the way she portrays this character. Yeah. End of story. Nothing else. No subtext. I think that the treatment of her has been abhorrent. Yeah. I, I, have, not, I have no ill will against yeah. her. I don't wish anything bad upon her. Toxic fandom is especially rampant in Star Wars. It is. And it's to the point now where it's well, the what, fact what that Star co- Wars has to come out and say. Well, they told her beforehand, hey, here's what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, saw that. The... The treatment in the past of Kelly Marie Tran, John Boyega, Daisy Ridley, and now Moses Ingram is, it's, it's insane. Even going back to Mark Hamill, though, too, yeah. right? And I guess it's not the same, right? Because he wasn't because he was racist. But, like, people rode Mark Hamill hard because he was not a good actor. Mm-hmm. And they didn't think he was the right fit for well, those Well, I movies. mean, Hayden Christensen got... For sure, uh, we, yeah. You know, we, we touched on that last week. Just the amount of hate and... Just, and rightfully, he was. It wasn't good. But again, we talked about. Yeah. Was it him or was it the writing? Right. I think it was the writing. I think so too. And now, well, w- wait till you get to three. You kind of get a little bit of badass Vader. A which lot. I'm, yeah, I'm all for seeing him kind of get some redemption. If he gets that from this show, then great. Yeah. I'm rooting for him. I so. yeah, same. And I, I think I really loved episode three a lot. And, you know, Frank, you you said to me that it's hard to get as invested because we, we know that these characters are going to survive and live on. But there were definitely moments where I found myself very worried for Obi-Wan and Leia just saying like, uh, I, and, and then I would have to like catch myself and remind myself like, oh, I know they're going to live. But I think that's a testament to the show, for me personally, at least. Yeah, I, it's one of those things where they can get you caught up in the moment. But if you know what's going to happen, you know what's going to happen. What was different for me with you know with Rogue One was we didn't know how they ex- executed that story. Right? right. We don't know the depths and the things that they had to go through. Mm-hmm. We already know the backstory enough of Obi-Wan and Leia and the forward story mm-hmm. to know what's going to happen for them. So this is an interesting part of the journey and they've done a great job of weaving it together so far and how they've put it all. But again, I just don't feel as emotionally connected because I know I'm going to see them in episode four and five yeah. and six and then seven and eight and nine for you know and it just it doesn't hit me the same way it's well made uh outside of the issues with the again the third sister character so far that i just don't think that they've nailed that yet but we'll see how they come around yeah and where, there's where still they time go. there's you know we could grow to be really impressed and you know things could could change nothing has know. made me stop watching it yet yeah but i'm not feverishly like I'm, I like it. Star Wars. I'm not the huge Star Wars mm-hmm. fan. Um, you don't have a tattoo like me? No. <laughs> I I mean, the Star Wars is good. The Star Wars? The Star Wars. <laughs> the wars and the stars. I mean, I like it. I mean, I had the toys when I was a kid. Yeah, I watched the yeah. movies and originals. I'm by no means diehard Star Wars fan. Yeah. Mandalorian was good. Yeah. Uh, one and two. Boba Fett. AKA Mandalorian 2.5 was we good. We still haven't even watched Boba Fett. I'm, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I'm how really... are you guys Star Wars fans? I'm just very behind. I'm, I'm not. Like, I am, but I'm, like, I don't have a tattoo either. So, well, I'm, I think I, most yeah, people don't. Of the three of us, I think I'm the, the biggest fan. So, Boba Fett is not that good of a show. Mm-hmm. The last two episodes are because it's all Mando. I heard, yeah. That's all it is. There's no Boba Fett. Yeah. It's Mandalorian. So, those episodes are good, <laughs> but the show is not that good. Right. Mando's good. Yeah, I'm excited for Mando to come back. So, Jeremy, you watched more of Evil. I am still behind, but you finished season two? Yes. Okay. That comes back, what, next week? 10th, I think? I think so. So Big cliffhanger. Big cliffhanger Ruh-roh. in season two? Where are you at? I'm on episode four. 
try the what's what's going on in your world oh god i don't remember it's been a couple weeks they were doing the exorcism of on leland, leland. okay yeah and then like leland was being ridiculous the most ridiculous like, i mentioned last week was just him popping up in the week yeah funky town yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's never been brought up again since then <laughs> it it's hasn't one ridiculous random moment okay that forever will stick with me and then that um, scene will never leave my head what's his face has his own new like sleep paralysis demon ben yeah no is it ben, ben. is that his character awesome name? Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's ben okay so for some reason i had ben as luke Skywalker. No, Mike, Mike Coulter's character. Sorry. I don't Who's know Mike why Coulter? I Luke. The priest. The... David? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Clearly, good, it's been a few weeks. Good episode. <laughs> the main we are ca- nailing this. Luke guys. Cage? We are nailing this. <laughs> Luke Cage? I'm so good. Luke Cage. Yeah. It's David. All right. So I had it backwards in my head. Yeah. Sorry. So Father David and Ben. Yeah. So, I mean, that's been kind of interesting. I think the last one I saw was when Ben got stuck in the basement of... Oh, in the elevator? Yeah, The yeah, elevator yeah. game? Yeah. That was a creepy episode. It's creepy. But do it's, you, it's do you too... feel like they're leaning towards making a decision of which way they're going in terms of is it real or is it not real? I, th- I think they made a decision a long time ago. I okay. think it, it's it's real. Okay. In their world. All right. Um, but there's too many people seeing the same things yeah for it to not be real okay and stuff that does happen later it's real are we gonna get more story with the daughters and like the one in particular that might be affected they no not yet okay she has a, a tooth problem yeah we, we know this still. but we haven't gone back to that yet okay interesting they're like planting seeds everywhere they've got and like, are we yeah gonna go it's back like to this? it's it's weird they have a lot of tentacles going out but then they never come back yeah. They bring up stuff and then it's never visited again. Okay. And there's probably six or seven of those kind of loose yeah. ends, which I will say I'm enjoying the show. It's not a great show. Mm-hmm. It's a good show. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. For you, it's it's horror comedy. Right, right. There's some funny aspects to, yeah. for sure. It's right up my alley. It's a dark comedy horror, a little bit of action here and there. It does get a little more, you know, adult season okay. two. Yeah. But it's no longer on CBS at this right. point. So language and adult situations Ooh. increase. Excellent. Sign um, me up for adult situations. But no, it's it's a good show. It's not a great show. But okay. I've watched it. I'm I'm caught up now. I want to see where they go. But the writing is all over the place. Yeah. They need to kind of tighten up a little bit. Okay. And if they can do a good third season, then it'll be worthwhile. And then just to wrap it up, we had a couple of trailers and stuff drop this week. Frank actually caught some bits and pieces of a few, including the latest Thor trailer. <laughs> You, not all of it. You just saw like a glimpse. Yeah, I was watching the NBA Finals. Damn and, it, you flicked too hard. And the NBA Finals were... Did you see that? No. Pe- okay. <laughs> the NBA Finals were being uh, hosted by Disney, ABC. So what did they do with their own product placement? They Star ran, Wars. <laughs> not this time, but a, a trailer for Thor Love and Thunder. I did see Jane Foster. I saw the joke about eight years, seven months, six days, or whatever it was. That was funny. It's been two, three years. Yeah. <laughs> and then I saw Gore. I didn't think he looked that good. I think he looks really scary. Uh, I don't know. It just looked like to me like Christian Bale pasty, was pasty Christian Bale. Yeah, was dusted in chalk dust after like <laughs> coming in from the teacher's room by dusting the dusters outside. Yeah. That's all I saw. I was like, Ugh. I'm still gonna watch the movie, but. I don't need to see any more. That was enough yeah. for me. I got to laugh. I'm like, yeah, let's that go. was that. Yeah. And then we got a trailer for a new Apple series called Loot, starring Maya Rudolph and Adam Scott. Have you seen anything about this yet, Jeremy? Have I think not. the trailer just dropped today. Yeah. So this seems to be uh, Adam Scott and Maya Rudolph are a married couple. They're very wealthy. And then it looks like he is leaving her for a younger woman. Yep. And it looks like he bought her a yacht as like a like consolation prize yeah good, good for her and good for him she wasn't privy to the fact that he was going to be leaving her and it looks like the chaos ensues yeah from here i'm a big fan of both of them so so am I. No, I would definitely check that out yeah. yeah now speaking of apple tv what's that one show everybody's talking about i've not seen it yet for all mankind no your honor no right oh or... severance severance yes severance. Also, also with adam, adam. scott yeah 
Yes. Yeah. We <laughs> also have not watched that yet, but I have heard incredible Everybody's things. raving about that show. Yeah. Ben Stiller produced and directed at least a few episodes, uh, but he's he's kind of a the mastermind behind the series from what I understand. But yeah. Because it looks weird. It does look really weird, but I've heard nothing but excellent things and it is high on my yeah. list. On my list, I haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah. We also got a Pinocchio live action trailer, which... Look, I'm just going to say it. Pinocchio is probably one of my least favorite of the Disney animated movies. I just, it is my least favorite. I just don't I have care. no. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I love Jiminy Cricket with the passion of like a yeah. thousand suns. So like. You do. When You Wish Upon a Star is like one of the greatest songs I, I in the a Disney. A thousand mez. Uh, the Disney Meh. canon. I think Jiminy's great. The rest of the story yeah. can go away. I really. I, I'm with you. But Jiminy alone rescues it to me that I can't say well, what you're saying about it. Uh, I did see something. I think it was Variety or somebody said something crazy like, Tom Hanks is unrecognizable as Geppetto. It was Tom Hanks with a wig and a fake mustache. Yeah, you and literally it look at it and it's like, like, oh, it's Tom Hanks. <laughs> Tom Hanks with a wig and a fake mustache. I'm like, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> unrecognizable. It's, it's yeah. clearly Tom Hanks in a wig. And a fake mustache. But we oh, also... Unlike in, Tom Hanks in a fat suit for Elvis. And, uh, exactly. But still doing a funny accent. So yeah. I... Slightly we, less recognizable there, but still recognizable. Tom Hanks. Yeah. But still Tom Hanks. Still Tom Hanks. We do get Cynthia Erivo as the Blue Fairy in Pinocchio, though, and which is probably one of the few things that's going to really get me into that theater. Piece. Who? What? 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 Cynthia Erivo. She's incredible. She's, she's an incredible. She played Harriet yeah. Tubman in the recent movie. She was in she was Widows. In Bad Times at the El Royale. She's a Broadway star who's crossed over into making movies. She's, she's also be in Wicked. I, I'm a huge fan of Broadway musicals, so <laughs> I clearly know who you're talking about. She's also like got one of the coolest like Instagram fitness pages for someone who's not like an Instagram. Dude, she's like I have yeah. as many Instagram looks as I do Broadway shows, which is zero. <laughs> she is. She is a even though I unit. continue to tag you in every single Instagram post. I never see them. I'm not on Instagram. <laughs> she is a unit a of, a, of a person, and she also seems like one of the super nice people like in the industry. I do it all for the gram. That's like I said. <laughs> I think you'd like Widows, and she's in that, and she's quite good. And that, yeah, you should see Widows for sure. It's Viola a, Davis. It's um, a twenty. 20- 18 version of Set It Off. Cynthia, or what, what, not I've Cynthia. I've not seen the 1998 um, version of Set It Off. Oh, it hurt. Elizabeth well, Debicki. Francesca had guessing, it either. in a year, but. Uh, until I made her watch. I think it's 98 or 99. You're, saw, you're I in, know I'm in the ballpark. You're, you're in the ballpark yeah, yeah. for sure. Francesca well, hadn't Rodriguez seen it either. is in it. Liam Neeson. Yeah, it's a great movie. And then finally, I don't think. Did you see the trailer for The Menu, Jeremy? I have not heard of this. No. Okay. So this trailer dropped a few days ago. It's our Ray Fiennes, Nicholas Holt, Anya Taylor Joy, John Leguizamo, the woman who plays the lawyer Sounds artsy. in Ozark. It's it's like a huge ensemble cast. Sounds artsy. Yeah, it's it's funky. Basically, I'm not gonna like it, am I? <laughs> no, I think you're actually gonna see the trailer and be like, "This looks weird," but I'm kind of in. Uh, <laughs> Ray Fiennes plays a chef and this whole group like goes to this like random island for this very like formal like food tasting. Do they eat people? I don't know but it's like they're eating all these different things and like Nicholas Holt is like crying and like Anya Taylor-Joy is like I don't know I'm not really that into this but then it like flips and then clearly there's something more sinister going on. They're on Club Dread. <laughs> So Fire fest. It's like a funky thriller vibe, but I, based on the trailer alone, I'm very into it. Now, so. completely random thought here. Have you ever seen Delicatessen? No. You ever heard of Delicatessen? It's, it's ringing like a vague bell. It's one of those artsy mm-hmm. horror slash type movies. Okay. I think you would like it. Mm-hmm. It's got to be, gosh, from early 90s. I know it has like a huge, huge cult following, but yeah. it kind of is something. I'll tell you later, but it kind of reminded me of that. Okay. I think you would like that show. I think it's in French subtitles. I'll look for it. I don't mind subtitles. Or movie. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and then we've got Independence Day. Dun, dun, dun. You're listening to Big Screen, Little Screen, and Everything in Between. With your hosts, Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. (laughs) 
<laughs> and we're back. And you're singing again. <laughs> it's Independence Day. It's actually not till next month. That's true. All right. One Jeremy, month from tomorrow. you were tasked with picking a summer blockbuster. You went with Independence Day, a 1996 Roland Emmerich classic. You said that very accusingly. I did? Seemed that way. Oh, sorry. I feel didn't, attacked. Didn't mean to. My bad. This movie was a huge success when it came out. A uh, budget of $75 million, box office of $817 million. It was the highest grossing film of 1996, beating Twister, which we know is very near and dear to my heart. And, and mine. <laughs> and also set it off, which is a 1996 film. Oh, gosh. Fun fact. And uh, Mission Impossible, it also beat. At the time, it was the second highest grossing movie ever behind... Titanic? No, this was, came out in 96. Uh, before Titanic. Star Wars? Jurassic Park. But dinosaurs. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's, there's a big one that goes roar. I believe we, we played knocks the Jeep over. Trivia recently in Jurassic Park. How did you, how did you do there? I came in second. You came second, in second. I don't want to talk about it. It's because it wasn't all Jurassic Park trivia, No, I know. Right? It was. It, that, that's the only reason. Fallen Be Kingdom got fall, you. Fallen Kingdom got me because there's no power on this universe that's going to get me to rewatch Fallen Kingdom. So so even going into Dominion next week. I'm not rewatching you're it. You're not going to rewatch no, it. No, there's no. hell no. So you'll never know what happened to Macy. Oh, I, I know what happened, but I don't care. And Maisley. She, she's in the new Maisley? one. So Maisley. Macy. She's in the new one, so it doesn't matter. But she's a clone. Fallen Kingdom is awful yeah, trash. Which, which which version of Maisie is it? <laughs> anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Independence Day. Jeremy, did it hold up? When was the last time you watched it? Maybe six, seven years ago. Okay. And how did you feel revisiting it? It's still what it is. Yeah. I definitely enjoyed it more 20 something years ago. Yeah. Frank had the same. He's like, why I, is this not working for me right now? I, for some reason, I. And it's not nothing to do with the whole Will Smith slap. Mm -hmm. I just I've grown tired of that Will Smith character. Like when he crashes the ship and is all like yelling at the wind yeah. and shaking his fist in the air and yeah. cursing. Like none of that did anything for me. It just seemed so forced and so ridiculous. I think you're right. I, I think didn't... at the time it was new and funny, and that it's what catapulted him into stardom. But we've I've seen, seen it, it now. so many times now that it yeah. just it's not. Fresh, for lack of a better word. That makes sense. Yeah. But no, it it, it comes off as just an annoying character, mm -hmm. like somebody I would really not like. And I never realized how annoying Harry Connick's uh, character was. Oh, well, Harry Connick doesn't bother me. And He's not it, in the movie long enough. Yeah. To bother me. <laughs> What's my point? That movie would be better if it was about six minutes shorter. It is by, by taking out every scene Randy Quaid is in. They removed every Randy Quaid scene. It'd be an instantly better movie. It is a long movie, though. In general, it's two and a half hours. You know my thoughts. I know. Hundred, hundred minutes. They, I think they could have, yeah, made definitely made it shorter. Frank, this has always been. I mean, since I've known you, anyway, you've really, in, you've been a fan of this. So rewatching it, you know, what do you think was missing for you? I think post slap the disdain i have for will smith has kind of soured me on a lot of his films so i was not excited to see this movie and outside of jeff goldblum and bill pullman they judd rescue hirsch. Judd, judd, hirsch. judd hirsch for sure yeah, yeah they rescue an otherwise mediocre script mediocre effects uh, oh, there are plenty of, well the effects at the time are phenomenal the effects won an oscar Right. For best visual effects. Jurassic Park came out three years before and looks 20 times better. It was still good for its time. It was good for its time, um, but it's not... I, I didn't think they the held The story was way. always problematic. I've always hated certain parts uploading a virus yeah, off a of Mac. It doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. It, no. Just no. So it was convenient how these, easily we defeated the aliens. These like big blockbuster destruction movies are not about making sense. That's not right. the point. You go for the explosions and the silliness and the, you know, America's going to save the world, which I just well, think This is... was the world was saving the world. No, we taught them how to do it, though. That's yeah, the whole we, point. We they told made the a world. point Randy, of saying... Randy Quaid was the one. The but, Americans... But David said, David said, the Americans found a way. Yeah. And the British guy's like, it's they about want, time. They want to launch an attack. Blah, blah, it's it's yeah. about time. No, yeah. like they're waiting on us. 
And then you see With all the other breath. countries like, ooh, the Americans have, have the plan. You have Israel and Palestine fighting together side by side as friends. Yeah. yeah. It's a little forced. It's it's a lot forced. A little it, Aborigine children running to, but, to Sydney Opera House. But the things about it that, I mean, Pullman is fantastic. Pullman is fantastic. Goldblum is Goldblum fantastic. Goldblum is fantastic. Goldblum is also sexy as fuck. Like, when he is walking in the desert at the very end, and he's just got that little strut. That's probably the best part, is this, if you can just picture how awesome that moment was feel. Yeah. Yeah. The coolness factor of making yeah. that walk. Yeah. But you I'll, just saved the planet. Even also, like, beforehand, when he's just walking around and he's got, he's all, like, sweaty and he's, like, trying to figure you're, out what... You're taking us to a different level. What, well, then he's got, like, his, like, white tank top, like, poking out from his shirt. I was like, oh, my God. Um, you had Brett Spiner? Yeah, we did have Brent Spiner. But, God, it's all about Goldblum. Sorry. But no, Judd I'm, Hirsch I'm distracted. It's funny. Judd Hirsch is great. Uh, Harvey Firestone, or... Firestein. Yeah, Firestein. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. For his two minutes. Yeah. He's always funny. And little Mae Whitman is the president's daughter. She's so cute. Mm. Yeah. And she's had a long career now. I mean, she's still around. Yeah, so. she's still working. I think she... Good Girls, mm -hmm. or that might have just... That just got year. canceled last year, but she was yeah. on Parenthood before that. She has done a lot of... She played George Clooney's daughter in One Fine Day. And then she did The Duff, which I think is a wildly underrated like teen coming-of-age movie. Mm -hmm. I never got back into this movie and i just could not get around any of the flaws like i used to when i was yeah i can younger that's very fair to say i'm the same yeah. way i still watched i still enjoyed it but definitely had better memories of it 20 plus years ago yeah i think that makes sense than i do today i really like the alien design i'll say that i think it's really cool and yeah. unique and not like what we typically get from a lot of alien films the alien within the alien yeah yeah and then they've got their like tentacles and then like those really big hands and then the yeah, yeah it's all crazy it's cool that they don't have verbal communication like mm -hmm. everything is like telepathy based and things like that so how they how they put that together conversely the other aliens from the movie i like with their ack, ack, ack. Yeah. <laughs> Great communication skill set. <laughs> Great movie. I love that movie. Th that's one I used to hate. Yeah. And then I've seen it since and like it more. Is it one of the only Tim Burton movies that you like? Besides Batman? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, I didn't... So it's kind of like reverse Independence Day. Yeah. I didn't like it when it came out, but I like it more now. Yeah. Whereas Independence Day, I liked it more then than I like it now. Do we think that we... I, I mean, think the satire is great in Mars yeah, Attacks. It is. But just in terms of like the genre of whether it's an alien movie or a disaster movie or you know however you want to classify it, do we think we've just seen it done so much better now? And if so, where? Or do well, we just... I guess it's to break it into parts. I mean, effects-wise, of course we've seen better. Right. Disaster movies as a whole, I think we've seen better. Mm -hmm. Alien movies... I think we've seen better. Will Smith movies. I think we've seen better. <laughs> it's true. Jeff Goldblum movies. You've, you've seen better. I've seen better. I mean, so not that many where he looks quite that sexy, but I, I just I don't like the fly. Randy. I don't like Randy Quaid. He's sexy as fuck at the beginning of the fly, but the evolution not so much. <laughs> Halfway through, yeah, it turns. <laughs> it starts to turn. <laughs> no bundle fly for you. Yeah, not so much for me. Real quick, speaking of that. When are you going to be seeing Crimes of the Future? Ooh, I'm going to be seeing that as soon as I possibly can. Now, I've heard can. of this. This this is Cronenberg again doing body horror. It's got Viggo Mortensen and Kristen Stewart and a bunch of other people. And Leo Sidu that... and Scott Speedman. I know we talked about it briefly, I think, off. Yeah. It's going to be weird. Like a weird movie. Yeah, it's Cronenberg body horror and it's 20 years later and there's all sorts of new technology and things like that. From what I understand, Viggo Mortensen's character is able to manipulate his organs in a unique way. And he's now being hunted down by an agent played by Kristen Stewart. And we don't know what for, and we don't know where it's going. But I guess it simultaneously had 15 to 20 people walk out in can. And then also got a standing ovation. That's yeah. that's what I heard. Okay, I know I heard something. Yeah. So it was both, right? It 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 grossed people out to the point of being putrid and grotesque that they could not handle it. But then the people who stayed 
were were rewarded, so to speak, or felt some kind of way about the film. It's definitely going to be a movie that is not for everybody. Yeah. But going back to Independence Day, I do just want to call out, I thought it was funny. I know this is having to do with Randy Quaid, but I thought it was funny that even in the midst of an alien invasion, we were still skeptical of the people saying that they had been abducted by aliens and still... Like, yeah, that part was dumb. Like, he's still getting made... It's like, guys, look up. Exactly. Yeah. Like, we can let this one go. Yeah. <laughs> he's a drunk, he's like, an idiot, but... Yeah. The rest we can let go. I'm like, this is this doesn't make of any. all the things to get mocked over in this moment. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, I had the same thought actually. Yeah. It's like this is just dumb. <laughs> so I have a unrelated unre- question. During the dog fighting scene, we see Will Smith elude this alien that was chasing him. Will Smith probably being regarded as like the best fighter pilot, right? That we have. Where do you think that alien ranks on their fighter pilot scale that was chasing him in comparison? You think he's like a top 5% guy? I get you. The he was like, he was like, uh, first year per- learner's permit. Okay, there you see. I thought the same thing, <laughs> yeah. right? That there's, with that technology. He had the alien that, learner's permit. Yeah. And this was his first battle. And he, that reminds me, that scene, one of the scenes that absolutely drew me up a wall last, even worse than before last night. He's like, who's going to fly this thing? It's like, well, I've seen it in the air. I know how it works. Just because you see something flies, I mean, you know how to fly the damn yeah. thing. And then I've seen on, jets every day. Yeah, I've been on a million airplanes. It doesn't mean like I can fly get one. behind the wheel. I've seen how they move. Yeah. And when Jeff Goldblum... I've seen a cockpit. I've done flight simulator. <laughs> when Goldblum no. closes the, the windshield thing, yeah. and I, he's like, it comes with... It. I'm like, how do you know that? <laughs> like, yeah, why didn't... I'm sure that there's a whole setup where they're in... The rig, testing it, pushing buttons, figuring out what they do, right? But the fact that they didn't show us any of that. Right. And Just, then Will Smith with the oops. Also, if you're launching something that needs to go into space, you're not standing three feet behind it, right? right. Regardless of there's glass there right. or not. Like, I don't know if people realize this or not. Like, the sound waves alone from a, a shuttle launch will kill you if you're within, like, a mile. Well, that's right? what the water's for. It's not for fire. Yeah. The waters absorb sound waves. Yeah. It's not even like a joke. People don't like, uh, not j- just the force of the sound. That's why you have to be so far away on the launch. Yeah. So the fact that this thing was going so quick out of that, it's, there's a lot of things. A lot of dumb. L- the more I learned about science, the dumber this movie gets in, yeah. in comparison. I just hate the fact that he can fly because he saw how it moved. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. I've seen a lot of things move. I've seen people on, on motorcycles, ninjas doing all kinds of shit. I ain't trying it. Yeah. I've seen it. Doesn't mean I can do it. Uh, going back to Goldblum for just a second. As we... you would. Uh, yeah. <laughs> have, we, have you left Jeff Goldblum? Never. We've talked about many you know things. You've, you've... You know you've aged out, right? You're too old for him now. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Don't ruin my dreams. And you're only, what, 20 years younger than him? I so know. you're definitely too old. Yeah, you're definitely out. Uh, Closer but, to 30, I think, yeah. actually. We got Must Go Faster again from his Jurassic Park days. He yes. says it again in this, which I just think is a great little Easter egg. And I appreciated it personally. A bloomy, if you will. A bloomy. I like it. <laughs> so I just in, in general, too, this is a, a Roland Emmerich film, as we've said. He is kind of the king of the disaster movie, so to speak. Some of his other films include Day After Tomorrow, 2012, Moonfall. He also did the 1998 Godzilla and one of my personal favorites, The Patriot, which I really love, which is not a disaster movie, but it's still a great movie. That one I actually want to revisit. That's with um, Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson and, and Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger, yeah. yeah. Civil War? Or Independent. American War. Revolution. Yeah, American Revolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks, I remember watching it many years ago. Yeah. And I do want to revisit I, I that. I have watched that movie like a billion times and I adore it i want to say it's on hbo right now or it, it was be. yeah i still gotta watch it, me fall i it's, think of emmerich's films it's certainly my favorite it makes me mad watching him do corny disaster movies knowing that he's done something as nuanced and 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 good as the patriot because he takes a lot of his explosions and gunfights and all the cannon like that. fodder yeah but wraps it around this like human story and this element of this poor family that gets ripped to shreds and yeah the way that he's able to tell it and make you feel for the people in their lives and stuff like that. Who's the 
who's the Malfoy who's in it? The <laughs> Jason Isaacs plays. He is the, yeah. phenomenal as he, the villain. It was this. one like, of the first times I'd ruthless. seen him, I think. And yeah, he to this day, as many times as I, I have watched that movie, I have never felt more terrified and full of hate. Like just simultaneously, like I'm so scared of him and I hate him so much. I don't want to ruin it for Jeremy, who might not remember it like we do. I don't remember seen any it. of it. There's there's some ruthless tactics that this man pulls out to try to get things uh, accomplished yeah. in the film, based on a true story. I don't know how much of it is true, but I I guess we could also argue it's also Fourth of July. <laughs> yeah, kind Independence yeah. Day. Yeah. It's definitely an yeah. Independence Day style <laughs> movie. Yeah. Yeah, I I would say uh, this Independence Day guy is maybe revisit the Patriot instead, as opposed to yeah. Independence Day. <laughs> I, <laughs> that would be my. I, I can stand behind that. <laughs> what's funny, I think, is the the Patriot might be close to three hours. I don't feel those three hours. Yeah, though. I yeah. don't at all. It's a little bit different than with Independence Day. Yeah. So, any final thoughts on Independence Day? I think I'm good yeah. on ever seeing it. Yeah, I think we're. I'm. I'm uh, I think the same. I revisit it. I have good memories of it. I remember seeing the theater yeah. back in the day. I enjoyed it. I still think so. Bowman I'm not taking anything the... away from it. Yeah. But I don't see a need to watch it again. Yeah. I think Pullman's probably one of the best movie presidents we've ever had. Probably. I will. I'll give it that. Yeah. I mean, there's Michael Douglas in The American President does a very good job. Yeah. And Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. That guy's spot on. <laughs> top, top notch. Yeah. I mean, what he had to contend with. Yeah. I mean, you have that one president and Dick, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, none of them got in a fighter in a fighter jet and fought down the aliens and Give a saved the world. Remarkable speech that got everybody pumped up. Yeah. Exactly. Sam Rockwell did in Galaxy Quest. Got in the spaceship. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> he plays W in Vice. Okay, that's a stretch too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'll go to war for Sam Rock. Well, you, will, you guys you know will. that. So, the way Francesca feels about Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Has Jeff Goldblum ever played a president of anything? Ooh. Could he? I don't Would think... he? He played uh the what's his what's his face in Thor Ragnarok? The... Oh. oh. Yeah, the the grand grandmaster. Grandmaster. Yeah, yeah there you go. Flash. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, he's isn't he not the president of Chaos Theory in Jurassic Park? Isn't that his official title? <laughs> President Chaos Theory? Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so with all of that said, Jeremy, it's your turn to give me a category. Well, you gave me Summer Blockbuster. Yeah. And it is summertime. I didn't give you that. Frank gave you that. Well, somebody gave me something. <laughs> summer, summer, summertime. Who sings that one? Will Smith. Oh, yeah. He's everywhere in pop culture. It's not he like is. I can get rid of Will Smith. I'm just yeah. saying my opinion has changed. I guess about cops. Nothing. Most of the, oh wait, never mind. Yeah. Aliens. Up. Oh, yep. Yeah, well. Yeah. Cowboys. Good. Nope. No. Nope. Can't do that either. <laughs> Worst movie ever. Yeah. Wild Wild West. Yeah. E- even even guys in suits. <laughs> Pursuit of Happiness. Men in Black. That too. Mm-hmm. All right, Jeremy. What are you giving me for a category? I'm enjoying this tangent. <laughs> guys in suits. There's let's, your category. Let's, let's go. Guys in <laughs> suits. Yep. Matchstick men, here oh, we go. All right, now I'm back to the drawing board. <laughs> Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. <laughs> Still haven't seen it. You don't need to. Yeah. You, it's awful. It's Always be awful, closing. awful movie. Um, That's literally the only thing people remember. I know. Coffee's for closers. <laughs> summertime. Summer movies, summertime. Next week, I'm going on vacation. You are going on vacation. Bye. Very jealous. See y'all. So we will not have an episode next week. We're going I will to be, be not in the country. So anyway, with that in mind, how about a nice summer vacation or vacation in general movie? Yeah. Okay. Now I have a question for you before mm-hmm. we get into this. Are you going to do like a fun vacation movie like Jeremy and I are anticipating? Or are we going to get something like The not Ruins? In, not anticipating. Wanting. Yeah. I anticipate her making a bad choice and making me watch a bad movie. You, you're you're, you're going to get like, well, you like the beach. Yeah. I feel like I have a good pick, but if Is you Titanic guys keep talking, I'm going to pick Mamma Mia and y'all need to like. <laughs> it's going to be an awesome show because I'm not going to watch the movie and be talking about a movie I've never seen. You've made a commitment here, sir. Uh, I could pick some bad movies or I could pick movies that I love that you will be uh, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants I could pick. I could pick bef- any of this, the before this movies. Titanic a vacation movie? <laughs> <laughs> so 
So look, I. No, you look. <laughs> that was a travel. I no, I I think that was a transit movie. And Somebody's like, on vacation. That, that's like the commuter. I don't know if it, a cruise back then wasn't necessarily a but, vacation. It was more of a, m- a means, means of, of transportation. transportation. Yeah. yeah. Means, so, median, mode. All three of those work. Planes, for... trains, and automobiles. You guys. Okay. I considered Couples Retreat. Funny movie. It is a funny movie, but I've watched it a million times. I've now watched it, so I would actually have enjoyed that one. Yeah. So can't have anything I enjoy. Considered that. Then I was going to pick a movie that I haven't seen before because I want to see it, which is Weekend at Bernie's. But it's not streaming anywhere, and you can't even rent it. You have to pay $15 to buy it, and I just think that's crazy. That's crazy. It's not even that good of a movie. It's, yeah. It does not hold up. So, or it was streaming on AMC+, Plus, I think, but I don't have that. Frank, you mentioned Sam Rockwell earlier. I did. So this is your fault? Here's a movie that I haven't revisited since the first time I saw it, but it is one of Frank's absolute favorite films. The way way back. The way back. The way way back. Yeah. Is that vacation? <laughs> it's a, uh, it's they're on summer. summer break. They're on summer break, but I mean, it's not really a vacation. Yeah, it's not that's the way I was thinking. They're going. They're, to, like, they go to a beach house for the summer, and he's at like the water park and stuff. It's a all job. Summer. He's working. He's working all summer. That's not vacation. Okay, do I have to? It's a good movie. I mean, don't get me wrong. Wait, I haven't made you watch this again? No. I suck as a human. Judges, is this a vacation movie or just Are you going to talk me out of this? Cuz I will uh, if you if you if this doesn't qualify, I'll go with Couples Retreat. I'll let Frank be the deciding factor. <sighs> it was on several lists that I looked at for vacation movies. Okay. So then I'll, and if it's on if it's on a list, if it's on the internet, it must be true. So <laughs> I can't believe that we're going to do this movie, and I'm not the one who picked it. I know. That's that's bananas to me. Well, the irony is we've all seen it. We all enjoy it. So yeah, I know. It'd be an easy talk. Have you rewatched it? I've, I've seen it twice my entire life. It's not a rewatchable movie. Yeah. Frank will disagree. So I'll enjoy seeing it again. Yeah. I love the quick-witted nature of how it's written. Tony Collette is excellent. Steve Carell is the villain. He's playing is, against type here, which is really interesting. Yeah. And he's great in that. Rob Cordray does a great job as a supporting character. Oh, the entire cast character. Is... Yeah. Anna Sophia Robb, how could you not fall in love with her in this film? Like, she's just wonderful. Maya Rudolph. Maya Rudolph is great. Jim Rash is fantastic. Nat Faxon. No, I, I don't have anything to like about so, this choice. So, yeah, are you, are you good with my choice here, dear husband? I struggle with the idea that it's a vacation movie in the sense of what Jeremy was looking for, right? Okay. I, you know, Also, the kid's working. <laughs> All summer. Yeah. I will pop I will, and lock. I will change my pick if No no. He gets he gets I think he's offered the job because he realizes that he needs He's that bored on vacation. Food. Yeah. Yeah, but well no, he doesn't he's offered the job, right? Right. Sam Rockwell realizes that he needs this mm-hmm. for his A life, life experience. To be exactly. I get yeah. You. So if, somebody's got a pop and lock. And it's like so I'm sure probably your favorite job ever was being a summer camp counselor or doing some of those things, right? It's one of yeah, yeah, that's it's up there. One of my top three jobs of all time. So I yeah, I, I really enjoyed I, it too. I think working at a water park like in that vein would probably be so, uh, yes. There yeah. are some life experiences. This yeah. So. so yeah, I get that it's a little bit more of a coming of age movie, but. I'm picking it because it was on several lists that I saw. Well, so I'll watch that, and I'll also watch Couples Retreat. Okay, because... <laughs> there you go. We can do a double feature. Does we it, have time. That's now... true because we've got two two weeks. So Does... Does I haven't watched it in forever. As like, oh yeah, I remember that movie. We've we've that's done funny. A, we've done a triple before. Um, HBO. So we did Three Ten to Yuma. We did Harry Potter and the Half Blood yeah, Prince. Yeah, and then we did uh, I'm Like It Hot. Uh, yeah. So all right. It is so the way way back is streaming on HBO Max, of course, and Couples Retreat is streaming on like some services we don't have, Sling, TNT, True TV, but we can rent it for three ninety nine. Well, TNT so. is just yeah, yeah. So it's going to be the edited but we, version. We don't have cable, so TNT plays full versions. They do, yeah, on the streaming. I was surprised. Yeah, okay. The ones I've seen anyway have been. I've actually, I feel like late at night once I caught TNT and there was like nudity or something. And I was like. Well, on demand, it's it's the yeah. full versions. Yeah. That would be a good movie to test it on because. <laughs> yeah, because 
Couples Retreat is not rated R, but there's some... It is, yes, it is. I'm, no, it's, it's definitely rated it's R. Couples Retreat R. is definitely not rated R. It 100% is. It is 1,000% rated R. No, it really isn't. I'm, I'm disagreeing. Oh, shit. It you is are PG-13. both wrong. Yeah, it is definitely PG-13. Wow. Yeah, no, that's this is not a... That, that was a fact. I disagree. I would think, yeah, just because of John Favreau's character alone, it would be <laughs> R, but... Some of the anyway. classes. Yeah. <laughs> it's very crass and it's like right up until the border, but they don't use the F word and they don't go explicit with the nudity. It's a PG thirteen movie and yeah. it apl- and it because it appealed to more audiences. It's a PG sixteen movie. It yes, for sure. Right. I think that we need another category, if we're being fair. I think that we should have like twelve it, it, from PG thirteen to PG. The range should be are you then, do you have a driver's license yet? Yeah. 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 I, I would go PG, PG twelve, PG sixteen, and then rated R. That's that's how I would change things. But that's just my opinion. The MPA, quote as they are now, no longer the MPAA, because the extra A was too much for them. Too many A's. Too many A's. Not enough holes. No. <laughs> it's the biggest racket in film. I hate those guys. Yeah, it's silly. Anyway, so we're gonna do a double feature. We're going to do The Way Way Back and Couples Retreat. Both are PG-13. <laughs> Both are PG-13. Yes. So bring, bring the family. Yep. Watch watch along with us if you'd like. Uh, I know I always forget to do this, but if you are listening, follow us on Instagram, BSLS Podcast. We're, and... we're talking to you three people. <laughs> Facebook. Um, or on Facebook as well. You can find us there. So thanks for joining. Anything else, guys, before we wrap up? Have a fun week. Yeah, enjoy your cruise. Have fun storming the castle, Jeremy. I'll be storming the castles. (laughs) Talk hard. You've been listening to Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between with Francesca, Frank, and Jeremy. With the entertainment space as crowded as it is now, it's nice to have a podcast that doesn't hold back their takes from new releases to older movies. And everything in between, we got you covered. We hope you enjoyed the show. We know we had fun. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And until next time, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. And we can be heard on Spotify, Apple, and iHeart. See you next time on Big Screen, Little Screen, and everything in between. Mm